Howdy, I'm Jason Lewis, and today in the Auto Edits Garage, we're gonna be throwing this underneath there. That's right, two videos in a row working on the Mustang. This is pretty awesome, right? Well, this right here is a Flowmaster Scavenger X-Pipe with a couple of Super 10 mufflers. So here's the quick rundown of what we have going on here. Now, I ordered, as you guys know from the last video, I ordered pretty much this setup, but in three inch. This is now a two and a half inch diameter system. So it's all two and a half inch diameter tubing. So what I ordered was the Flowmaster Scavenger X-Pipe. Now the X-Pipe, this X-Pipe works unique in the sense that it's not a true crossover and it's not an H-Pipe. This is the exact in between of that and that's exactly what I wanted on this. I think an X-Pipe wouldn't sound as deep and rough that I want what I'm looking for for this vehicle and an H pipe is just too traditional so I wanted that exact in between and supposedly according to the dyno sheets the scavenger because there's the the port is right here so they join right here but it's not a true crossover so this actually makes a ton of low end torque and I kind of need that this is a small block it's got a supercharger on it so we're trying to get a little bit more power out of it but it's not going to be a huge monster we're going to stack the deck in our favor now the kit comes all just disassembled. So you have your two tubes out from the header collectors. And now I do have those Flowmaster headers in this thing and they're full length and I love them. They fit perfect. And one of the pet peeves I have is when you have a car with full length headers and, and you see the collectors hanging way down underneath the car. I'm not a real big fan of that. And these, these aren't bad at all. So the tricky part was getting them past the center where the transmission cross member mounts to. So that's where this happens. And then I had to end up getting, cause they are three inch collector and I'm going to a two and a half inch pipe. So I had to get a reducer to work here and went ahead and welded the bung in for our fuel injection, uh, our O2 sensor here. Moving towards the party aspect of this <laughs> install. Now back here we have two Super 10s, which uh, Flowmaster calls them one chamber. I'm gonna correct that. We're gonna call that fun chamber because they're gonna be loud. And uh, this is pretty much what I have on the Dodge Ram. I'm super stoked with it there. I have a single on the Dodge Ram. This is gonna be duels out here. It's gonna sound great. And then once we get this hung in place, now if you notice here, I have a couple of hangers and I'll show you where I mounted those in the back. So now it'll mount and then those collector flanges mount the front these hang the back and then this port will just be supported. And that's just a traditional way of hanging an exhaust under a car. And then all we have to do is I bought a couple of 45 degree uh, sections of two and a half tubing and a couple of cool, sweet Flowmaster chrome tips because we're just gonna do the turn downs from now. If you guys are, again, remember from our last video, it's gonna be tricky to get this exhaust over the rear suspension. I have the T Total Control Products coilovers back here with the canted four bar suspension. It's gonna be tricky. I'm not giving up on that yet, but you just can't right now. So, now the reason I painted these black is mostly because, okay, partially because my welds aren't super good, but also because the fact that this is gonna be a little bit lower than ideal underneath the car, I really wanted all the blend. I hate seeing when you see that low, side shot of a, a car, that profile shot of a car, and you see a lot of exhaust hanging down low. I don't really like that so much, so this is gonna be very blendy. Um, I'm very looking forward to getting this hung in here and see what this looks like, so let's do that. All right, so this will be our first chance to use the Craftsman V20 half-inch impact gun. Now, I'm looking forward to implementing this into my workflow because I only have an air gun right now and I wanted to have something that I could take out, work on the truck and the Jeep and this, and also pack this in my field bag as well. So I'm hoping that this thing is gonna be strong enough. Um, this will be our first test. These are torqued on. I think I torqued these all onto 100 foot pounds. So let's see how it does. Uh, didn't even hesitate on that. All right, first impressions are, this thing is pretty beefy. I think the real test is when we go to rotate the tires next time on the truck or the Jeep, because those are torqued on 110 foot pounds. But that made short work of this. So first, first impression, like this a lot. It feels good in your hand, very stout. Uh, what I like about this as well is that it, it is complementary to the V20 brushless uh, small impact and 
drill that I have. I got the whole set, so this is gonna be pretty cool. Now before we yank these off, I just wanted to again point your eye to the beautiful ET Team 3 wheels on here. I like these a lot. Those are a home run. Okay. All right, so the plan is to just slide this into place. So back here, I'll bring you back in a second and show you. So back here, I have it, instead of welding these mounts up, I actually just picked up the seatbelt mount because this car is not gonna have a rear seat. It's gonna have a place for Pinto to chill. Now for the moment of truth, we'll see how well the collectors fit. Oh no, look at that. Oh no, they went together. Please get some bolts. Holy mackerel. Did not expect that, as you can notice by my shock. I mean, I totally meant for that to happen. Now here is our Craftsman brushless impact. And this thing is a rock star. It's tiny, it's powerful. The batteries are all compatible like with the half inch impact driver. So this thing rules. I'm actually a big fan of that. We'll use that to snug this down real quick, just to get a bite on it. Okay, boy, that cinched up nice. Tight. Now you wanna make sure that you tighten down these flanges equally and don't just monster down one side and not the other. Like that. Come back to the other side. You'll notice is that you have to pay attention to a few things here. The drive shaft here is our limiting factor of going up. And when you have a X pipe, the whole definition of that is that they're gonna connect. So they have to be below the drive shaft where normally if you had just two straight pipes going back, you could tuck them nice and tight up inside the drive shaft tunnel here. And um, you know, we can't. But if you notice, I got this pretty tight and that since the back tires are hanging, the, the, the suspen rear suspension is in full droop. So I know that this is as far down as the drive shaft is gonna go. And then when it's at ride height, the drive shaft will actually go up a little bit and clear this. So, so that's your limiting factors and that's how you know where, where to be right now. And that's where this is. This is just literally two sheets of cardboard close to the chassis here. Um, that's very close. I have very tight to total control products engine mount, so there's not gonna be a ton of engine uh, movement in here, so that'll help that, so I don't get any knock or rattle there. All right, so these are basically the seat belt, rear seat belt center mounting holes, and I just repurposed them and I'm twisting the bolt in from the back side. It's pretty stout. <laughs> they aren't going anywhere. If you notice, they missed the drive shaft just by exactly how much I need them to miss the drive shaft by. Now the trick here is gonna be to get the turn downs to not be super visible. So first up, we're just gonna measure how far we wanna cut and then what the angle is gonna be. I'm thinking, I guess we could just do them both right straight down like this and keep it linear, but part of me wants them to angle out a little bit. I'm thinking we want the angle about there. So we'll cut there. Right. Let's 
mark that, cut it, and we can tack it into place and see what we like. Okay. Always wear your safety goggles. Ow, that's hot. Ow, probably should keep my gloves on. Ow. I kind of like it. Huh. So we'll just mimic this piece here and call it a day. Hot sparks on your arm. That'll hold for now. We'll get a better weld on that in a minute, but let me see what that looks like. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's the stuff. Right about there. <laughs> I think it's cool. All right, we are committed. <laughs> I think it looks pretty good. But wow. Look, remember, I'm not a good welder. It's been a long time, and I don't know if you follow me on social media, Auto Edits Jason on Instagram, or Auto Edits Jason on Facebook. Uh, I, I posted about this. But, voila, it's done. Let's take a look and get some beauty shots. Show you what we've done here. You may be asking yourself, turn down for what? I know, I've been waiting this whole video to say that joke. The main reason for turndowns is to deflect the hot exhaust from cooking your rear axle tubes and gear oil. So they are functional in that sense, and even though chrome tips on them may seem a little silly, I'll know they're there, and that's cool to me. So there it is. It's not perfect, but it's done, and it looks good for now. Do I recommend doing this on your garage floor? Well, why not? You're gonna burn a few holes in your shirt, but Look, that's done. That was one day's worth of work. I love it. And that's just one step closer to making it a driver. And that's what's most important now. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, enjoy your drive. <laughs>